Hey and welcome back. This is going to be one of those periodic machine upgrade and improvement videos. Nothing too complicated, but if you own a small milling machine, it's definitely worth watching. The problem that I'm up against is the rigidity and overall mass of the machine, or I guess lack thereof. As much as they try to make the machine look bigger than it is by fitting a big cover to the column, the column is actually pretty small, and the mill itself only comes in at around 100 kilos, which to be honest is pretty surprising. Well that was a 2mm width of cut in steel and you could probably hear that it was starting to sound pretty rough by the end. I can tell that there is a lot more to come out of the motor, but at this point I can tell it's being limited by the frame of the machine. So let's go ahead and try to improve it. Now as you can see, there really isn't that much mass in the column, and during machining, as you can probably imagine, it needs to resist a lot of force that's pushing up against it. Now the plan is to add a stiffening bracket or plate to the back of the column, make it a bit more rigid and add some more mass to the machine to help it dampen vibrations. So what I did is I picked up a piece of 20 by 130 flat bar, it weighs about 14 or 15 kilos and it cost me about 40 to 45 bucks. It's about 20 millimeters too long. I'm aiming for it to be about 715 mils or about as tall as the milling machine is. So I'll need to cut it down. And whilst I have the grinder out, I might as well remove the scale. I'll probably end up painting it to protect it from rust, so the scale needs to go. To bolt it to the column, I'm planning on using some caphead screws, and I'll bolt it to the base and the column. And I'm aiming to bolt it where there are places where there is more cast iron, such as on the bottom and near that crossbeam. Now initially, I was going to rest the steel on some 1-2-3 blocks, clamp it down to the table and drill it that way. But I didn't have enough table clamps and it just didn't feel all that rigid. So I put the vise back on the table and I removed the fixed jaw so the piece of steel would fit in the vise. And when there was too much stick out at one end, I used a machinist jack to stop the steel from sagging over too much. With the holes drilled, I can now put the metal on the back of the column and clamp it down. Now I made the holes 5mm, which is the tapping drill size for M6. So I can simply line up the cordless drill and start drilling, and I can be absolutely sure that I'm going to be drilling square, and the holes are going to be lined up in the right place. And once the holes are drilled out, I can tap them for M6. And with that done, I can now put the steel back on the mill, 
and I can drill a hole for the wiring for the power column feed. I can then drill the 5mm holes out to 6.5mm and then I can use the counterbore tool to counterbore them to accept the cap head screws. And finally I'll put the steel back on the mill and I'll drill two holes for the bolts that will hold the back cover on. And now I can loosely drive in the screws. And I can definitely feel that there's enough play in the hole sizes and spacing that I should be able to adjust the tram of the mill without the bracket being an issue. Now before I do the bolts up tightly, I'm going to attach an indicator to the head of the milling machine. What I want to check for is any movement in the head as I tighten the bolts. There's no guarantee that the steel that I'm using is flat, so if it's bent in any way, it could pull the column out of alignment. Likewise, the column could already be tilting forward due to the weight of the head, so it could be pulling the column backwards to counteract it and correct it. Now I believe this is a factor of spindle nod, whether the spindle itself is tilted forwards or backwards, though I don't want to get too far into this topic because it is a pretty big topic and correcting it can be difficult. And looking at the indicator, I got about 0.01mm of movement on the indicator. Now I'm not too sure as to whether this is because the piece of steel that I was using was bent, or the column itself was tilted over, but in the small amount of testing that I have since done, it doesn't seem to have affected the mill in any way. Now before I put it back together, I'll re-solder the power cables for the power Z feed. Now the cover will sit about 20mm further back, but you don't really notice it, and once it will get painted, it definitely won't be noticeable. Now I'm doing the same cuts as before, and the difference is just astounding. The biggest difference is just how much quieter the mill is. The vibrations have been cut down and I can push the mill a lot further than I could before. Now that was doing an almost 3mm width of cut, which was really pushing the motor to its limit, but that was just chewing right through it, and the surface finish is really good for a rougher. Overall, for 40 45 ish bucks, this is a great upgrade for any small milling machine. Now I do understand that getting a piece of 20mm plate might be difficult, but a YouTuber that I was watching called Nigel Taylor did this a while back and what he did was he got some thinner plate, bolted on several ribs of steel bar. Now you won't get the added benefit of having the extra mass, but the ribs shaped like this will be fantastically rigid and you should see a huge improvement. And that's about it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something new, and I hope it was useful to you if you own a smaller milling machine. And I guess, see you next week.